Randall Krosner. He's a former Fed governor who is now a professor at the University of Chicago, and he joins us now. Randy, fantastic to have you on the show. What do you make of what the Fed announced today? A bit of a reality check for consumers, if not investors, I think. No, I think that's right. I mean, the Fed has, I think, made it very clear that they're very concerned that um, that inflation, uh, the progress on uh, bringing inflation down slowed, and they don't want to do an early all clear. Uh, that's what happened in the early 1980s, and that led to a big mistake where the Fed then had to raise rates much, much more. And so they're going to be willing to wait a little bit longer, exactly as uh, Jerome Powell said, to feel confident inflation has really come down. We just got a good report, but that's one report. Yeah, and this is critical. And we also have to tie this into what we saw from the jobs market, which was a bumper addition of jobs net in the past week. And of course, they have to focus on inflation and jobs too. What does it take between now and let's call it September to justify the rate cut coming then versus perhaps leaving it until after the presidential election? So I think they'd have to see that um, the labor market isn't heating up anymore. If we continue to get higher and higher numbers for, for job growth, my guess is they are probably not going to move. And certainly if inflation just kind of stagnates where, uh, where it is now, um, their preferred measure is the personal consumption expenditure index, a little different than uh, the, uh, the CPI. The CPI is a little more heavily weighted towards things like housing, uh, the, uh, the PCE a little bit less so. And so they're going to be looking at that when that number comes out at the, uh, at the end of the month. And, uh, and so I think they need to see continued progress on, uh, on inflation coming down. And they're going to need to see the, uh, uh, the unemployment rate move up a little bit, see the, uh, the, the job market cooling off a little bit. Then I think they'd feel comfortable moving in September. But if we're just kind of staying like roughly where we are, I think they're going to wait. Do you think they cut at all this year? Are, are you more weighted towards actually do achieving that one cut that they're talking about versus perhaps not, not doing anything at all this year? I think it's likely that they will will cut. Uh, I, I'm not quite as optimistic as the, the Fed and, and some commentators are about how the economy is going to evolve towards the end of the year. I think uh, eventually the, uh, the higher uh, real interest rates, that is adjusting for inflation, this is really the first time that we've had positive real interest rates for a decade. I think that's going to start to bite towards the end of the year. And I also think um, we, we always hope that the Fed can just move the dials perfectly so that they, ah, the unemployment rate will just go up to 4.1 or 4.2 and stop there. It's very rare that they can just make sure that they stop where they want it, but the unemployment rate going up a little bit more. And I think that um, I think there will be a little bit of weakness, and I think that's going to lead them to, to cut towards the end of the year. I mean, that's the, the fascinating thing about the, the way that we're talking about this in, in many respects. It is down to arguably, for the most part, the resilience of the American economy that's allowing them to be in this position where they're saying, and he said today, you know, the policy stance based on what we're seeing at this moment is is about right. Should we also be putting more of a positive spin, perhaps, despite the fact that for for borrowers in this country, of course, they'd like to see rates down, come down and um, a little bit more um, room to maneuver, I think, on how much money they're taking home and have to spend. Sure. I mean, uh, as you said, part of the reason that the rates are where they are is because overall the economy is doing pretty well. The unemployment rate is still 4 yeah, percent. It's a little bit higher than it was before. But oh, my goodness, if you look over the last 50 years, 4 percent is a really low unemployment rate. Uh, job growth has still been uh, been reasonably strong. Inflation has been coming down. But, you know, households are still hurting because although now um, they're starting to have their wages go up faster than inflation, for a couple of years that didn't happen. And so they still feel that they're they're a bit behind, and uh, that's made people a little bit wary and a little bit uh, a little bit cautious. So we'll have to see how things things evolve. And unfortunately, I'm not that optimistic about any good shocks coming. I think most of the the geopolitical shocks and tensions that uh, that are there are probably not going to be positive ones, and and uh, could be problematic for economic growth as well as potentially for inflation. I wondered whether part of the investor reaction that we saw today, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, and the, the record highs in the S&P and the Nasdaq was because uh, for some investors, at least out there, they were in some way fearful that perhaps we could be flirting with the prospect of needing to do more, not less in terms of, of tightening. Is there even a fraction of a possibility that that is a possibility, particularly if some of the strength that we're seeing in the labor market and wages actually continues to feed into to prices in the economy. 
Sure, you're having wages grow up, uh, go up by around 4%. Right. Overall inflation is going up, you know, around 3% or so. Um, and, uh, and so that means that unless uh, wage growth starts to slow down or productivity really, uh, really takes off, it's going to be very difficult for the price level to come down very quickly. And in that circumstance, the Fed's going to, to hang tough, uh, keep, uh, keep the uh, interest rate relatively high. And so uh, there, uh, there'd be two reasons that the Fed would do a major cut in interest rates. One would be because the economy is really getting into a very bad situation. Or the other one is that the inflation has come down a lot. Now, one of those is a great scenario. One of those is not such a good scenario. But they could both result in a substantial reduction in interest rates. The interest rates will only go up if the economy is really uh, firing on, uh, on all cylinders and, and or the inflation rate is uh, starting to move up. I don't think it's going to be, be moving up. I don't think we're going to fire on all cylinders. I do think we're going to slow a bit. Mm. Well, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting uh, second half of the year. Oh, uh, yes. Former Fed Governor there, Randy Crosby. Great to chat to you, sir. Thank you.